Now I have a question from a student and she writes, I had a general question about Descartes. He starts off in his argument by saying that if senses deceive you even once, then basically they are not a reliable source of information. That as a human, almost everything comes from the senses. The idea of God can be heard from other humans in the said outside world, but hearing is a sense. So if he is not perceiving things from his senses, how is he perceiving them? If you discard everything that is learned from the senses, aren't you discarding most of what you learn every day? So let me see if I can't be Descartes and uh, start with uh, an answer to the question that, that's probably not the answer to the question that was asked, a shallow answer. And, and so uh, one might say, well, are, are you, you, you saying that uh, we can't come to the idea of uh, uh, God because we've been told? Or, you know, we, we're, we get the idea of God from the outside, we're told. Uh, well, that begs the question or assumes that there is an outside world, so we can't approach it that way. I don't think that's the question the student was asking. Another question might be, um, if everything we get uh, in, in knowledge or everything we seem to get through our knowledge comes through the senses, aren't we, by doubting the senses, excluding almost anything that we could possibly be thinking about? And the answer to that question, if that's the question that's being asked, is, well, that's not a bug, that's a feature. Because if we exclude sense data, there's a very limited range of other sorts of mental contents that we could be looking at for the requisite certainty of, uh, you know, for the cogito or for the external world. So, so if we're looking inward only in our inner mental contents, there's less to sort than just the whole panoply of sense experiences. Now, another way of phrasing the question might be, well, okay, uh, what if I got my idea of God uh, from one of my hallucinations? Okay, so I'm, I'm a solipsist. I know that I'm having mental contents. Maybe the mental contents I'm having are hallucinatory or maybe they're dreams. What if I just dreamed up the idea of God? Okay, now, that's more interesting because um, we have instances um, in the history of the sciences where uh, people's dreams lead to substantive discoveries. So for example, the, the fellow who came up with the notion of the benzene ring uh, got the idea originally by um, during a nap in which he, he dreamed of a snake swallowing its own tail, and from that he realized that the uh, benzene molecule could bond with itself and not have a linear shape, but a circular shape. Okay, and so in that instance, did he dream up the shape of the benzene molecule? Well, possibly. Uh, and if we're talking about um, not the idea of God, but God himself, uh, then the provenance of the idea really wouldn't matter. You know, would it be uh, a dream that I had, or would it have been uh, one of my hallucinations talking to me? Well, that's all fine if we understand by God a necessarily existing being, okay, a being that couldn't not exist, because at that point, um, the proof of the concept is within itself regardless of where the concept comes from. But notice at this point we've moved from just, well, I'm going to inspect, inspect the contents of my own mind and see if I can't find uh, some thought that couldn't have uh, gotten there from the inside, therefore there must be an outside. Uh, we move from that argument to the ontological argument in which we actually discover um, or we actually prove out the existence of God herself, rather than just the idea of God. And so this is uh, Meditation uh, 5. Okay. And the ontological argument, uh, at least in Descartes' formulation, is very simple. Uh, uh, two premises and a conclusion. Okay. Uh, premise 1. 
God is the supremely perfect being. Okay, premise one. Uh, let's dope that out to some extent. What, what do we mean by that? Well, um, what we mean is that it's impossible to conceive of God as lacking in any perfection just like it's impossible to conceive of a triangle lacking one side. So, fully perfect is part of the definition of God. If you know what God means, supremely perfect uh, being, then we know that God could be, uh, God must not be lacking in any perfection. Okay, second premise, first premise, God is the supremely perfect being. Premise two, existence is a perfection. Now, this is the, the, the premise that most people like to uh, dispute. Uh, and um, uh, for our purposes at the moment, uh, let me uh, give you Kant's reply to uh, that sort of dispute. Uh, Kant says, well, what Descartes really means is that it's better to exist in reality than in the mind only. And Kant says, if you disagree with me with this, uh, I've got uh, a $5 bill for you, but it exists in my mind only. Okay. And then you'd say, well, that's not as good of a $5 bill as the one that's in your wallet. Okay, so existence in Descartes is a perfection, and God is the sum of all perfections. Hence, God necessarily exists. Hence, God necessarily exists. And we get some results. First result, there's an external world. Why? Because God is a supremely, if God is a supremely perfect being, then God cannot be a deceiver. And so, in one way or another, our uh, experiences of the external world are going to need to comport with uh, our inner mental life because God's not going to be perverse. Second, if God is supremely good, God can't deceive or will that we be deceived. And so, God in God's goodness embeds in us the idea of herself. Okay, so, so it's like the, the, the stamp of a workman on the work. And once you have that idea of God, the supremely perfect, necessarily existing being, who can be no deceiver, then you're on your way to uh, doping out the whole of the uh, system for the sciences that doesn't appeal to teleology. That's what Descartes says in Meditation 4, and then in Meditation 5. Uh, if we have uh, any worries about mind-body relations, does the contents of my mind correspond to items in the external world? Uh, uh, don't worry about that, because once again, God is not a deceiver. Now, that's enough for today. Uh, what we've shown is that, God, that Descartes uses the concept of God to demonstrate that there is an external world, because the concept of God, the supremely perfect, necessarily existing being, couldn't have been derived from within us, so it must have come from the outside, hence there must be an outside. And then we looked at the ontological argument that, that says that if we understand what the word God means, that word is going to carry with it the idea of necessarily, necessarily existing. Just as a mountain cannot appear without a valley, God cannot appear without being in existence. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to uh, look at the ontological argument in somewhat greater detail and note that uh, there are certain formal problems that um, bedevil the ontological argument. Uh, and then we'll look at the uh, consequences of those uh, formal deficiencies in the ontological argument for the rest of Descartes' project, particularly what he would uh, like to achieve in meditations 
4, and 6. So, stay tuned. <laughs>